Louis Stanislas Xavier was the fourth son of the Dauphin, Louis Ferdinand, and his wife, Maria Josepha of Saxony. He was the younger brother of Louis XVI and the older brother of the Count of Artois, who later became King Charles X. His birth was difficult and the young Louis Stanislas had many health problems. It was expected that he would not survive. Due to this, Louis received an emergency baptism. The actual baptism did not take place until he reached the age of six years old. Immediately after his birth, Louis was left in the care of a governess. He had a close relationship with her, especially after the death of his parents. The young Louis was taught by the Duc de Vauguignon. In 1771, Louis married Maria Josepha of Savoie, the daughter of the future Victor Amadeus III of Sardinia. Although Maria Josepha wasn't very attractive, Louis treated her with kindness and respect. The marriage remained childless, which deteriorated Louis's reputation at court. After the death of his grandfather, Louis XV, and the accession to the throne of his brother as Louis XVI, Louis Stanislas became known at court as Monsieur. Contrary to his expectations, he was not appointed to the Council of Ministers. This led to a conflict with the king, and Louis initially no longer played a significant political role. This only changed in the two years prior to the outbreak of the revolution. However, Louis Stanislas advocated strengthening the Third Estate in the Estat General in order to enhance his public image. During his exile after the outbreak of the French Revolution, Louis Stanislas distanced himself from his actions at that time, as the increased power of the Third Estate was one of the direct causes of the French Revolution. In 1791, when the events of the French Revolution became more precarious, Louis Stanislas managed to flee abroad and join the counter-revolutionary exiles under the leadership of his brother, the Count de Artois. The brothers learned of the execution of Louis XVI in 1793. As the oldest living brother, Louis Stanislas proclaimed the king's son, the Dauphin Louis Charles, to be the new King Louis XVII. Louis Stanislas made himself the regent of France. The years that followed were marked by isolation, financial difficulties and the humiliating need to seek admission and help from various governments. After the death of Louis XVII in 1795, Louis Stanislas was proclaimed King Louis XVIII of France. Louis's chances of being able to exercise the office were slim as long as Napoleon Bonaparte was able to stay in power. With the advance of the anti-Napoleonic alliance, Louis's political importance began to increase. After two decades of coalition wars, the French population finally felt aversion to Napoleon's empire. From their point of view, the restoration of a French kingdom at least nourished hopes for peace. In January 1814, based on the will of the nation, the actual preparations began for Louis XVIII's return to France. On April 7, 1814, the Senate proclaimed Louis Stanislas Xavier King of the French. On April 11, 1814, Emperor Napoleon I abdicated unconditionally in the Treaty of Fontainebleau. Napoleon was exiled to the Mediterranean island of Elba. While Napoleon left the castle of Fontainebleau on April 20, 1814 to travel to Elba, Louis first drove to London, where a cheering crowd greeted him. On April 23, 1814, he traveled to Dover to enter his Kingdom of France on April 24, 1814 in Calais. The political climate in post-Napoleonic France was poisoned in many ways. During the French Revolution, the state had confiscated and sold property from the nobility and clergy. Now the nobility and clergy returning to France asked for their estates back. The church denounced government officials of their revolutionary past, often with the result that they lost their posts. The 500,000-man strong army was cut in half. 
even highly decorated and experienced officers, were replaced by immigrants of the nobility. The soldiers' pay was often cut. In addition, Louis had taxes increased despite poor harvests. Against this background, Napoleon quickly found support for his return from Elba. News of Napoleon's landing on the Côte d'Azur reached the king on March 5, 1815. Louis XVIII underestimated the situation. He promised a bounty on Napoleon's head and gave General Michel Ney the order to take Napoleon prisoner. Ney was originally promoted to the highest officer rank by Napoleon. General Ney claimed to Louis that he would bring Napoleon to Paris in an iron cage. After only a few days, Ney's regiments changed sides and advanced on Paris. Although not all of the officers defected to Napoleon's side, Louis lost his nerve and on March 19, 1815, the king fled Paris without notifying his ministers. Without a single shot, Napoleon was able to move into Paris a day later and take power again during the reign of the Hundred Days. Louis went into exile again. On June 18, 1815, Napoleon was finally defeated by the Prussian and British armies at the Battle of Waterloo. Louis XVIII returned to France promptly after Napoleon's defeat to secure his second restoration. Louis XVIII entered Paris on July 8, where he was received with great enthusiasm. In August, elections for the Chamber of Deputies ended up yielding unfavorable results. The electorate voted almost exclusively for the ultra-royalists. Anti-Napoleonic sentiment was high in the south of France, and this gave the south of France a prominent place in the White Terror, which saw the purge of all important officials of the Napoleonic government and the execution of others. The French committed barbaric acts against some of these officials. Louis XVIII deplored these illegal acts, but vehemently showed his support for the persecution of those marshals who aided Napoleon. The king, however, was reluctant to shed blood, and this strongly irritated the ultra-royalists, who felt that Louis XVIII was not doing enough. An estimated 50,000 to 80,000 officials were purged from the government during what is known as the Second White Terror. Louis XVIII resented Louis-Philippe d'Orléans and took every opportunity to snub him, such as denying him the title of Royal Highness, in part because of the role of the Duke's father in the French Revolution, by voting in favor of the execution of Louis XVI. For more information about the trial and execution of Louis XVI, you can click on the link in the upper right corner. The Duc de Berry, Louis XVIII's nephew was assassinated at the Paris Opera on February 14, 1820. The royal family was greatly affected by the tragedy and Louis XVIII broke an ancient tradition by attending his nephew's funeral. Etiquette normally dictates that kings cannot attend funerals as it might instigate thoughts of the death of the king, which is considered to be treason. The death of the Duc de Berry meant that the House d'Orléans would be more likely to gain access to the throne. Du Berry was the only member of the family who managed to father children. After Du Berry's death, his wife gave birth to a son in September. Henri, Duc de Bordeaux, nicknamed Dieudonné by the Bourbons, because they believed that with him they had ensured the future of the dynasty. However, the fate of the Bourbon dynasty was still uncertain. In his later years, Louis XVIII developed problems with diabetes and gout. It became extremely difficult for him to get around, so the king had to walk with crutches, and he was often transported in a wheelchair. Towards the end of his life, he developed generalized arteriosclerosis and gangrene. Louis XVIII finally died on September 16, 1824, at four in the morning. His brother, the Count of Artois, succeeded him as King Charles X. I hope you enjoyed this week's video about the Bourbon dynasty. Please join me next week for a new video. Thank you very much for watching.